Hello and welcome. It's Monday the 7th December and we are in Braintree in Essex at the site of the new GridServe electric charging station. Now this place has been getting a whole load of hype on the uh, forums and within the EV community so naturally we had to check out what it's about, why it's so important and we want to show you around whilst we're here, look at all the facilities, explain a little bit about how it works plus there's something Tesla owners should know. Um, so we're going to point that out to you as well. And um, hopefully you're going to enjoy this video as we look around this amazing facility. Okay, so when you come off the, uh, the main road, there's some dual carriageway there. It brings you around and you've got this road that comes into the site here. Um, it's quite obvious from the main road and actually it looks a bit like a petrol station. You've got a big sign and it displays what the price is per kilowatt hour. Um, so it's well signposted on the main road here in Braintree. But when you come into the site, you come around and you just instantly see this amazing setup they've got here. It looks like any other petrol station really. Um, but just to give you a bit of an idea of the layout, the road takes you around to the rear of the building and you come around the other side. On the far side over there in the, t on the, on the far corner are the Tesla superchargers. Um, so there's a bank of Tesla superchargers. Um, it's something you need to know if you're a Tesla owner. And I'll come on to that in a minute when we go over there. Um, but when you come past those, there's then a bank of seven kilowatt hour chargers. So if you don't need a rapid charge or you're just stopping for a coffee or meets in point, um, and there are some meeting booths upstairs. So again, we'll show you those in a minute. You come around to this uh, far side here and then you come into the forecourt area, again, much like a normal petrol station. And so on each side, on the left-hand side and the far right-hand side, there are up to 90 kilowatt hour chargers, and they all include a CCS and a Chatamo uh, tethered cables. And then the central bank, there's two rows down the center, um, and they are all 350 kilowatt CCS rapid chargers. Now, there's not many cars, or there's no cars at the moment really that can adopt a full 350 kilowatts, but this place is very much about future proofing and um, setting the standard going forward. So actually, as the technology improves and the cars can charge even faster and faster, um, this place will be able to serve them. Now, Grid Server are looking to set up another 100 sites in the next five years. And so I suspect they'll all be of similar layout to this and include these super fast chargers. Now, 350 kilowatts is an amazing charging speed. When the, when the cars allow it, and they're probably the fastest cars at the moment, probably the Taycan, um, but there's more vehicles come to market which will be able to utilize that full charging speed. Now, 350 kilowatts is, uh, is really hard to even comprehend, to be honest. That's, you, we're talking kind of 20 minute charging times, you know, that's, that's a phenomenal amount. Now, by the time you stop at a petrol station and fill up your car with diesel and, and grab that cost of coffee, it's really about the same time. So this, in my mind is the future of charging. This is what we will see more and more of. This is what will help with the adoption of sustainable transport over the coming years. And certainly by 2030, there will be lots more of these in place. It's not just GridServe, remember, there are other companies, but GridServe here have really set the precedent. This place is here, it's now, and it's amazing to see. So we'll show you around a little bit more. So we can see already, I mean, this is the launch day, um, but there's a whole mixture of cars. And this is what's really fantastic about this place. I think um, if you're a Tesla driver like, like myself, I've been a Tesla driver for five years. Uh, we've had the network. It's been fairly simple. I think the key to somewhere like this is it really helps all the other cars out there which haven't had their own uh, charging network. The privilege of that. It's been a bit of a mixture. Um, but this already we can see here, e-Golf, Mini Electric, i3, Teslas, there's Kia e-Neuros, there's MGs, there's Peugeot e208s. And the great thing about this is it makes um, the, the network and the availability to travel throughout the UK far easier uh, with simple to use chargers. It's, um, I've been to the last couple of uh, summits, uh, uh, the uh, EV summits in Oslo, and one of the key talking points has always been about how to make charging simple and fast and easy. We've had these uh, over the last few years, a variety of networks and you have to have different RFID cards and, and apps on your phone and it's been a bit complicated. It can be a bit unreliable. And when you get to a charging point, it might only be two chargers. Will they be blocked? Will they already be in use? And I think anybody who um, has been driving an electric car that isn't a tester would have faced a lot of those difficulties. Not always, but you know, frequently. And I think what someone like this does, it really, there's 36 chargers here. You know you're going to be able to turn up, get a charge. They're fast chargers, so you don't need to be here for very long. So cars can come and go much like any other petrol station. 
And if there was a network of places like this up and down the country, it would give me far more confidence to drive cars other than Teslas around the country and do the higher mileages every day. I mean, you've got to remember this is only days where you travel more than 150, 200 miles where you need these kind of rapid charges in an electric vehicle anyway. Normally we're privileged enough to leave with a full tank every morning. Um, but having this, I think will give lots of buyers reassurance and a, a comfort and again, really help adopt electric vehicles, which is what this is all about. And there's a couple of other aspects to this site here, um, which I think really completes the full picture. And that is the, how the electricity is generated and then stored. So let's talk about uh, what we have above us here. And up above me here, we have a bank of solar panels. And we have that across the, these two uh, uh, platforms here, plus on the uh, rear of the building. And um, those solar panels, along with a solar farm located a few miles away, are generating an enormous amount of energy. Today is probably the worst case scenario. It's foggy and there isn't any wind, but these are generating energy. Now that energy can't always go straight into these cars. And at night it can't go, you know, we can't generate it then. So the crucial aspect of this is that that energy is being created and being put into some huge batteries over there, something like six megawatt hours of storage. So the energy is being constantly trickled into those batteries. And then when your car turns up, and you plug it in, those batteries can discharge into the car. So this is uh, fundamental, I think, again, this adoption of uh, sustainable transport and electric vehicles. It's about the whole picture. And one of the common criticisms has always been, but you've got to burn coal to make the electricity to power the cars. Well, even if you burn coal, it's more efficient anyway. But the key thing here is that it's a complete uh, solution. You can see that in action. Green energy, battery storage, green driving, uh, absolutely perfect combination. And this is why it's not a thing of the future. This is here, this is now, and it's just fantastic to see it and demonstrated in action. It's all about education, I think, with the adoption of EVs. And uh, anyone who's in doubt needs to just come and see this place. It's phenomenal. Okay, so at the, the front of the charging stations um, is this facility here. In here, we've got some great shops. There's Costa Coffee, there's Booth's, there's WH Smith's, uh, there's a post office, uh, there's seating upstairs. There's also some meeting rooms. So, I mean, what a great place to meet up with some people, some colleagues, and business associates. Couldn't be better. Have a meeting, charge your car whilst you're here. Um, so let's go inside. It's pretty cold out here, to be fair, and we'll show you around a little bit. And uh, I think you'll be very impressed. Okay, so this is uh, Sam, and what I found uh, interesting here with grid servers, they set up their own division for leasing cars. So, uh, Sam, if you can just tell us a bit about that, it's probably better coming from you than it is from me. So, why don't you just tell us a bit more? I can see you've got cars in the showroom here, so it's great to see. Uh, so, what is this leasing division, and how's it working? Sure. Um, well, the whole principle of, of the business generally is to have a number of different revenue streams, and one of those streams is charging, one of them is the battery storage and the distribution of energy. Uh, many others, but fundamentally my responsibility is with the EV solutions piece, which is leasing electric vehicles. Yeah. Uh, and as part of that package, we include the energy uh, within the lease of that vehicle. So people can come to this site and use uh, a RFID card, a, a swipe card to uh, have access to as much energy as they need okay. for the full duration of the vehicle lease. So in a way, it's a little bit like the original Tesla scheme where you kind of uh, get a, a, a a moderate or reasonably unlimited supply of, of uh, charging included. Uh, I can't say free, but included within the, in the package, I suppose. And um, from talking to Tonson as well, you plan to have quite a few of these sites. So I guess that's going to be quite a uh, or increasingly advantageous uh, network to take advantage of. It is. And, and what we want to make sure is that it's seamless and easy yeah. for people to tra transition away from That's it. the key, isn't it? Yeah, yeah transition yeah. away into yeah. something that's it's understandable and the education piece is always as you know it's incredibly important and yes. we need to get a nice even simple solution for, yep. for leasing of a vehicle yep. and then compare that against the traditional lease of an ice car with the petrol 
uh, yeah. costs to go with it because we all know electric vehicles are still a little bit more expensive than their petrol counterparts. But as again, as you know well, when you, when you overlay the, the cost of the fuel into that, um, yes. they're not. So we've got to get that education piece across and putting energy yeah. included is part of that part of that education piece. Really. Yeah, I think it's a great it's a, it's a it's a great idea, a great setup, and um, obviously as grid surf continues to grow, it'd be uh, even more advantageous around the UK as well. Um, and I quite agree. It's about education, keeping it really simple, and um, that I think is the answer to the increased growth of electric vehicles, sustainable transport. That's the solution, isn't it? Yeah. It's not yeah. that complicated really, is it? No, that's quite simple. And, and the other simple statistic is we've got 1% of vehicles on the road today are yeah. electric and there's a 99% market that we're all trying yeah. to, to tap into. So the people that do it as simple and, and as effectively as possible will yeah. have the greatest market share. And, and this, this infrastructure is part of trying to grab some of that market share. I think that's it. And so I see in, in here, you've got a fantastic lounge. It's, it's lovely inside here. Um, you've got a couple of cars actually on display. Yep. Um, very nice Mercedes EQC over there. I'm quite a fan of those. Yeah, me too. And uh, you've got a ZE50 behind the, the camera here. Um, and then it screens here. So this is so people can actually sort of browse the leasing deals that are available at the moment. Yeah, it's, it very much uh, mirrors the, the website, but they will touch digital screens where you can understand more about the business as a whole, yeah. or you can drill into our vehicle solutions and you can choose choose vehicles and sliders and, and uh, choose which vehicle you want, under what term, under what initial payment, and, yeah. and uh, what mileage. Uh, and it will automatically calculate a, a value per month based on the criteria that you chose. Yeah, um, and then you can press a button to say, yes, that's, that's, that's what I want more information about. Um, scan a QR code and then we've got all the information and then we can contact you later to, uh, yeah, to perfect. the process an order with you. Nice and easy, that's the way it should be, yeah, shouldn't again, it? Yeah, I'm trying to make it simple. And always sit here and have a coffee and hopefully top of the car you've got. Um, thank you for your time, Sam. It's been really useful. It's just a fantastic facility. Uh, I do encourage anybody, whether you're an EV driver or not an EV driver, to come here. There is parking for non-EVs as well. And hopefully this will be um, just that extra step in the confidence to go forward with purchasing new electric vehicle. It's a fantastic facility. Yeah. Thanks for sort of, you know, showing us around. And uh, I guess this is all open, all functional to the public now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yep. So we're kind of manned from, um, I think it's six in the morning till 9.30 at night, something like that. Yep. And then it's 24 hours though, the rest of it. Yep. Okay, so people can come here 24 hours a day. Look, access to toilets in the evening. Good no, question, but... No, we, we can't get into the building. Yep, yep. Late yep. at night, unfortunately. Okay. And then, um, obviously it's 24 pence per kilowatt hour for, yep. the, for the fast charging. Um, it's as simple as that. RFID, 24 pence per kilowatt hour. RFID, all contactless payments. Perfect, yeah. And then in the future, we will have um, like a membership. Yep. And in that case, we'll have like the tester network with just a plug and charge. So you'll be able to plug in. Absolutely. And, um, sorry, I'm missing that. Yeah. Plug in <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll be able to charge straight away. Perfect, so, um, that's yeah. All, all in place. Excellent. And the great thing is that everything, all the charging is with 100% renewable energy. Yes, so this is a solar farm that's putting energy into the grid, and then we balance that out with the energy we take from the grid. And you've got all this battery storage just over behind battery us there, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. So um, I think that's the key, and that's part of the education, and it answers one of the criticisms we always get as we're trying to promote electric vehicles is people saying, well, you've got to make the energy in the first place. But literally, with the exception of probably today, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, make, <laughs> you're making your energy, you're storing the energy, and that's, we can see it going straight into the cars now, and that's just the perfect combination, isn't it? It's all about the education, we can see everything here, uh, which is great for that. Um, 
And I think the other thing that's important really to get out to people is, is these, these places are funded by these concessions and, and the facilities here. So it's so important that when you're here, having a charge, make use of these great facilities. There's meeting rooms, there's coffee, there's food, there's sandwiches, there's drinks, there's a lounge area, there's even a gym there. Um, so let's make the you know, most we can to promote the grid server, everything they've done. Let's use the facilities and we hopefully will see lots more of these. How many more are we talking? So we're looking to build over 100 of these in the UK in the next five years. That's phenomenal. And that's a massive logistical and legal achievement, I guess, and uh, arranging the, the grid networks and everything, yeah. Absolutely. But if we don't have the ambition to do that, then we'll never seriously need to needle on climate change. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. I think it's fantastic and uh, it just makes life so much easier. And I think we're, we're seeing that turning point where although Tesla had this advantage with the ease of a charging network, um, places like this, make, you know, the other all EV cars have been brilliant, but there have been some restrictions realistically when you own other EVs yes. on charging and ease of charging, and this just addresses that. So, if we've got more of these along with other networks and providers, it's just problem solved, isn't it? As far as I'm concerned, I think it's easy. So, Great. no, well done. Thank you for your time and showing us around. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay, so you remember earlier I said if you're a tester owner, there's one thing you just need to be aware of, and that is if your car does not have CCS, i.e. Model S or an X, and doesn't have the CCS adapter, then you're not going to be able to use these superchargers. Like most of the new supercharger sites, or all the new supercharger sites now, I should say, um, these are CCS only. So. If like us, you've come here and you've got a 2014 Model S without a CCS adapter, it's going to be quite hard to rapid charge. Now you can, uh, you may have your Chadamo adapter. There are Chadamo 50 kilowatt rapid chargers here. Again, you need to have your uh, Chadamo adapter with you. And uh, otherwise, you're going to be limited to the seven kilowatt chargers that they have here, which is also a bit slow if you're just stopping by on the way on the part of a longer journey. So, Tesla owners, I think it's now worth getting that CCS adapter from Tesla. They brought the price of that down, um, and then you can use all the newer supercharger sites as well. It's not just a case of buying the adapter, by the way. You do have to have Tesla. Um, uh, reconfigured software in the car to allow that adapter and that will actually open up your supercharger map in the car to show you these locations like this which have just the CCS connections for Teslas.